Hi there, and in today's video, we are going to be discussing physics process and process. This is going to be a super, very beginner friendly tutorial, and we're going to be seeing stuff in a practical way. So, we're going to be seeing firstly this example, okay, in which we have um, this simple uh, example, okay, of a body using physics process, okay, which has some physics implemented, and then we'll also see this other example, which does not have physics and is just an eight way. A movement controller. Here you won't find complicated explanations or formulas. You will find what is actually important for your game development journey. The only piece of theory that you must understand is this one, okay? For either processing, which is process, okay? It allows you to run code that always a node every frame as often as possible. So this will depend on the, uh, the, the power that your machine has. The more powerful your PC is, therefore, the more frames is going to be able to be run at, and therefore, the more times process is going to be called. However, physics, okay, process, happens at a fixed rate, 60 times per second by default. So it doesn't matter if your PC is super powerful or not that powerful, this should always aim to be executed at a maximum of 60 times per second. So here we can see the first difference. This one is variant, basically it, it can change how many times it is executed, whereas this, one's, this one tends to be um, always the same. Now that we understand this, okay, when do we use each of these functions? So you may remember that if you go to add a new node and you go to node to this collision objects, physics bodies, you may find here different types of objects, okay, of nodes. So for example, what you have here are collision objects, okay? which are inherited by all of these nodes, okay? But you also have here another category, physics bodies, okay? Which the only node that is not here inside of this category is area. So usually what is said in the documentation is that whenever you want to move any of these objects, okay? You must do that in the physics process. Whereas if you wanted to move an area, okay? That is not a physics body, so it does not have any kind of uh, physics behavior, you should directly do it in the process. Of course, remember that there are some physics bodies that cannot actually be moved, for example, the static body. But for when you want to move a character body, a rigid body 2D, or even an animatable body 2D, this should be done in the physics process. And why exactly, you may be thinking, okay? First of all, if here in this uh, character body 2D node, which is basically this player over here, which does have physics because it has gravity, if here we do this in the normal process function, and we run this scene, as you can see right now here, the character is not kind of falling. But in reality here it was my error because it should be falling. In reality there shouldn't be major differences right now in the execution or, or, or anything like that. So you may think, okay, can I use them in the exact same way? No, you can't, okay? This is a very simple example. We don't really have that many collisions, okay? or that many complex behaviors, but if then we had a more complex kind of behavior, okay, with more objects colliding with each other, and we want to do more advanced stuff in more complex games, well, there we are going to be seeing lots of differences, okay? In reality, now I am in the physics process, and what you will see is that we, we, we start to see some differences. So previously, we were able to climb on this collider, okay, which is, by the way, this is just a rigid body, okay? with a circle collider, okay? So previously in process, we are able to kind of climb on top of it, okay? But in reality, due to the, the shape of it, we should not be able to climb it, okay? And due to the jump velocity that we have. But in process, we were able to do it. So it doesn't make any sense that we have kind of different behaviors, okay? Um, so you can also see how they are, the collisions are pretty like weird in that manner, okay? Once again, this is a pretty simple example and even silly in a way, but in more complex behaviors, you're going to see lots of first. So whenever you do need to move, as we mentioned, a character body, a rigid body, or an animatable body, you have to do all the logic directly inside of the physics process. Now, if we go now to where we are moving directly in the in the process, okay, in this in this time we have another scene that is uh, over here in main 2. Here have this player, which is just an area 2D, as you can see. And this has this script over here, which the only thing that it does is pretty similar. 
just that it does not have any kind of physics implement. It just gets the input direction using input dot get vector, okay? And the only thing that I do is grab the position and add the direction times the speed times delta to make it constant, okay? I'm not going to dig deeper into this because it's not the topic of the video, but you will see that this works just fine, okay? It works perfect. If we were to write over here physics process instead of process, what's going to happen is that probably in this case, as we don't have any kind of collision or anything like that, you won't notice anything. But you, what you will notice, okay, is that the movement looks a little bit, maybe not that smooth, okay? And why is that? Because remember that physics process is executed at 60 times per second, okay? Whereas process, okay, can be called as many times as possible, okay? And usually, okay, in most cases, process is called way more times than physics process. Why is that? If we go ahead here and in process, what we do is directly print our current frame rate. So print engine dot, uh, it was FPS, get frames per second over here. My PC is currently running at 1000 FPS, okay? So process is being executed 1000 times per second, okay? So let's get our results here. 1,800, uh, something like that, okay? 1,800, this is for process. But physics process is, remember, only called 60 times. So the update of this position, if we call it in physics process, is only done 60 times per second. But if we call it in process, it's done 1,800 times per second. So it's way smoother, at least for this kind of of behavior, okay, we, in which we don't really need physics. In reality, we can see the same difference here. In the character body 2D, let me go back to the, to this main scene. If we play it in physics process, well, it does not look laggy at all, uh, but if you compare this result to what you have in process, you may be able to see on your end if you replicate this that this movement is way smoother. It is smoother, but it's not accurate in terms of collision and it's not realistic okay in terms of collision because for example here you should not this is a circle so you shouldn't be able to kind of climb it like this if we in reality go to um debug and basically collision shapes in real life probably okay you don't want to you are not able to do something like that okay uh you are not able to do that so this is all because here we're seeing process when we have physics so here we should be implementing physics process. Then what's the conclusion of all this? Whenever you want to move an object, okay, that is either an animatable body, which is not really used a lot, at least in, in, in every single type of game. But anyway, if you want to move an animatable body, a character body, or a rigid body, do all the logic related to the movement directly in physics process. Where, whereas if you want to move an area 2D for any reason, directly do it, do everything in the process. If you find any problem with collisions, movement not being smooth, whatever it is, try to use the other one, okay? There could be specific cases, specific projects in which you do need to, for, for some reason, to use process instead of physics process or the other way around. But in general, these are the rules. If you want to continue learning Godot, you have all my courses in the description down below. And with that link, you're going to be able to get a huge discount, something like 70% off. So you have, this is the latest course, okay? Over here, you have my previous one, which has more than 40 students. And you have my full Unity course of more than 20 hours of content. All, all the links are in the description down below.